Hi, I'm Mildred Cho. Thank you for inviting me to this. And um, so this is the second session um, called Building the Relationships, Citizen and Community Engagement in the Development of Research Projects. So, um, and I think that we will, in this panel, will be able to give you some examples of some of these different kinds of relationships. And I know that our panelists will be talking from firsthand experience about um, sort of their, uh, the pros and cons of these, the challenges and the opportunities. Um, and so I'm just going to say a, a few brief words of introduction um, and also just let you know that we're going to go in an order that's a little bit different from the order that's in the program. I'll, I'll tell you about that right before we get started. Um, but just as by way of introduction <clears throat> to this panel, I just wanted to focus on the issue that we are talking about, which is building the relationship, which is um, a lot of times where these kinds of activities start. Um, if you think about sort of how science has evolved over the last centuries, um, it's changed a lot. Maybe in some ways, a science was initially all citizen science. It used to all be sort of um, citizens, maybe only men, probably rich men who were self-funded, but okay, citizens. Um, and it, it's, it's only more recently in history um, that science as we think of it now and have come to know it has become professionalized and institutionalized as Sandra talked about um, and especially in the realm of biomedical research we have like the National Institutes of Health and it's a big thing. Um, but with that professionalization and institutionalization one of the things that I hope we'll be able to talk about in this session is that um, how I think Pearl mentioned this too that um, that come that has come with a, a evolution of um, self-regulation, which is part of the core of what it means to be um, professionalized uh, for an activity to be professionalized that, that sort of assumes that there is a level of self-regulation built into that um, and external regulation as well as sort of definitions of roles. So to be professionalized, you have to sort of have set rules about who gets to be in the club and who is not in the club anymore. So we're talking about breaking all these barriers, but that means breaking a lot of um, structures that relate to regulation and ethics. Um, so I hope we'll be able to talk about that over this session. Um, and also power relationships, who's in power, who's not in power. Um, and the regulations such as protection for protection of human subjects are really based on this idea of people being um, not in power and needing protection from those in power. So we're talking about flipping a lot of roles. Um, uh, and especially since citizen science introduces this idea of self-representation, uh, where self-representation was not possible before. Um, so, so we're sort of moving back to the future here. Um, and, and so we need to, re what we're doing, I think, is renegotiating these relationships. Um, and as we mentioned, the role ambiguities can give rise to ethical issues, um, such as uh, conflation of clinical and research goals, like uh, such as the therapeutic misconception, conflicts of interest, both uh, financial and non-financial, and questions about justice and the legitimacy of representation. Um, so we're going to hopefully be addressing some of these issues in this panel. I just want to give you an example of um, sort of something that sort of indicates why we need to have this kind of discussion um, that and that guidance is necessary for negotiating these kinds of relationships and a discussion uh, about sort of concrete discussion about what does it mean to have uh, engagement with the public, engagement with communities. So I'm going to give you a, 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 an example from a study that we have been doing of the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee. I don't know, is there anyone in the room from the IACC who's been on the IACC? It's a, it's a government committee which is made of uh, both non-federal public members as well as uh, federal members and their goal is to um, coordinate all the funding activities for research and services for autism in the United States. Um, and their uh, committee uh, includes a member uh, of a person with aut autism spectrum disorder, a parent or guardian of somebody with autism uh, on the autism spectrum, uh, and a member of an advocacy organization. And they also solicit public comment to this committee. And so I, we have done a study where we identified two separate examples of the activities of this committee that contrast. Um, so for one of these examples, 
uh, in the public comment period between April 2010 and um, about two and a half years later, they tackled this issue, which was identified by the public commenters, um, of uh, wandering as a problem for families with uh, someone who's, uh, who has autism. And in April 2010, in February 2011, the committee had already written a letter to the Department of Health and Human Services with action items. Uh, in April 2011, they initiated a study with the Interactive Autism Network. In October 2011, they already had developed a new ICD-9 code to, uh, that was created specifically for wandering. Um, in 2012, uh, the uh, issue of wandering was added to the strategic plan for the IACC. And in October 2012, a survey was published in the journey, journal Pediatrics. And since then, there's been a move to include wandering as an amber alert. Um, all those things you get on your phone that tells you a kid is lost or been kidnapped or, or something. And so that hasn't um, been approved yet. But that is for, um, for that kind of activity, especially the research part of that activity, that is a sort of stunningly fast um, uh, turn of events. Uh, in about two and a half years to get all of that done. Um, in contrast, um, we found an example um, where the issue of vaccine safety was raised in the ICC public comment, which you might imagine was very controversial. Um, it was raised first in May of 2008 and in 14 subsequent pub public comment sessions since then. Um, in 2008, the IACC voted to conduct studies of vaccines and the relationship to autism. In January 2009, the IACC voted against conducting studies on vaccine research. Um, then in uh, 2009, the vaccine research was removed from the IACC strategic plan. In 2010, vaccine research was reinstated in the strategic plan. Uh, and in 2011 and 2012, it was removed again. So you can see that there's uh, clearly a there, there's clearly the rubber is meeting the road and not in a good way. <laughs> there's a lot of skid marks here, um, and we need to figure out how to actually get, um, incorporate this idea of um, citizens being involved and the public being involved in research, especially in these research planning phases and research funding decisions early on, um, and sort of to decide what happens when there's sort of a clash of epistemological you know, considerations, what counts, who, there are different ideas about what counts as research, what counts as good research, what counts as fundable research, and what should be a priority. Um, and so I, I'll leave you with that as um, an example of what I think our panel, we're going to figure this all out by 1245. Um, and so we're going to start um, with Holly P.A., I hope I said your name sort of right, um, who is uh, with Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy. Then we're going to move to uh, Elizabeth Yampierre uh, uh, with the group UpRose. Um, then move to Nick Anderson, who is now at UC Davis in California. Um, and Sally Okun with uh, Patients Like Me. And their bios are in your packet, so I'm not going to go into detail so that they can spend the time um, talking. So, Holly, thanks. 